Welcome back to the channel, ladies and gentlemen. We are back on the 2014 Jeep Wrangler, and I've got a lot. Hands are dirty already. I got a lot of stuff I got to do today, and uh, I, I'm, 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 I'm on the fence about this thing. I don't even know if it's going to come out or not because the amount of heating and pulling I've already done, and it's still. Look at this. So, if you look up in there, you see where that bolt is. Yeah, that bolt right there. It was right there in the exhaust. So Shine it's, dead on. It's an inch, it's now an inch forward. One inch off the muffler. What time is it there? 10.34. Oh, okay, bet, bet. Uh, but if you look at the, at the uh, engine mount, look at the engine mount, Nate. Right there, you can see the rubber part. See that rubber piece sticking out? That should be hiding. So what that means is right now, a a new engine mount will not go on. It won't fit. No matter how, what you do, no matter how much you stretch it, it's not going to go on. Is it going to need a new engine mount? Of course. Yeah. Uh, that engine mount is ripped. And so it's definitely going to need a new engine mount. I mean, that is the only really thing that is stopping us from just, you know, rigging it up. Uh, we could rig it up. Like the man said, it's a woods toy. He's not worried about it. He just wants it to drive straight. Uh, but that right there, that engine mount being how it is, that's going to force us into actually fixing this frame the right way. Otherwise, you're not going to get the mount on there. We could get a new mount, pull the rail, put it on, let it go. But then his Jeep is going to be vibrating all the time. Anywhere he goes, he's just going to be vibrating because the, the rubber is going to be too tight and then it'll probably break. Too. Maybe we should do what you were talking about yesterday, how the whole frame section needs needs heat. Because remember, you, you, you only really heat it in the kink area. Maybe you should heat the whole thing up. Not necessarily red hot, but just enough to where it's a little bit more malleable, you know? Yeah, uh, that, 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 that may be the next. Because I was thinking if you put heat like basically from this area all the way, it'll probably. But that's the problem. I can't. That's, I can't, yeah. I can't put that much well, maybe not a lot of heat, and plus I'm gonna be here with the water, making sure nothing's catching on fire, but yeah, it is pretty dangerous to be putting heat everywhere.
got there, boss? What are you, what are you installing? Oh, this is the, the little part that is supposed to be on here, but it's not. Here, I got you. It's supposed to be on here, but it ain't. This is the, the chain resetter. Wait, and then... Pretty much pulled out. It's a lot of heating and a beating and fussing and cussing, but we got it pretty much. I think it's out. I don't know if you guys remember, but if you look at this body bushing right here, this body bushing used to point this way. Now it's pointing this way, which is actually a really good sign because now we can move on to pulling the cab. Uh, as I mentioned before, we have to pull it here because it's, it's a little tight here. As you can see, this gap here is bigger at the top 
than it is at the bottom. So normally what I do is I just grab it right here. I just grab it right here in this little corner. It's like a perfect spot. I think Jeep actually designed it to be pulled right here. They knew that these things were gonna fold up like a little tin can. So they put all types of little places for you to pull on. Uh, but yeah, we need to give that a little tug, uh, possibly maybe even grab it right there and tug on it. But I think it's gonna be better to tug on it from up top because that's gonna move the whole cab like it's supposed to. Uh, it actually came out, the cab actually came out a lot with just the frame pulling. Uh, because if you don't, I don't know if you remember in the first video right here, this, this was actually overlapping here. Uh, but right now we're, we have a decent sized gap here. It's basically where it's supposed to be. Uh, I think this is actually supposed to be a little bit bigger. These Jeeps, they tend to have really big gaps. Uh, let's go look on the other side. Yeah, see, it's a little bit bigger, not by much. This is actually small compared to most of the Jeeps that I've seen. And uh, also, I have a question for you Jeep guys out there because I've been seeing a lot of this and even another Jeep owner told me about this. Why are y'all bending the corners of the doors to get these little bolts off? Why? I've removed them countless times and I've never had to bend the door like that. I know that was done by someone removing the door because this is like the fourth Jeep that I've seen this on. And one of the guys that works at Chuck's, he has a Jeep, he's like, Jeep bro. And that's what he said. He said, they'll bend the corners here, that way it's easier to unscrew this bolt, which to me is just absurd. I don't know why you would want to damage the body of your vehicle just to maybe take your doors off twice during the summer or whatever. Uh, but other than that, this side is pretty good. Uh, you can see that gap up there is pretty freaking small. You see that? That's how we need to make the other side look or something very similar. I don't know if we're gonna be able to make it look exact, but we're gonna try it. We're gonna put a little pull on it, and if it closes the gap, then it closes it. If it doesn't, we're just gonna fill it up with windshield glue and smooth it out real good, and it'll look yeah. perfect. Tighten it down, Nate, tighten it down. Look at that gap. Whoa, that gap. That gap right, see that right there? That's, uh, that's Fiat gaps right there. If you ever go look at a Ford Fiat, you'll see these caps right here. And usually the uh, manufacturer will make a real wide door gap like this. That way if you lock your keys in your car, the locksmith can get in there. He can press the little button right there to make it open. Slowly release. Almost, man. Almost. Almost there? Almost there. I Wait, mean, you can actually see that gap moving? Yeah, of course. You can see it closing. I think we are. 
For real? In the front. No, there's more framework? I think so. <sighs> That's how I feel, bud. Imagine me. Imagine the guy in here in the trenches. Yeah, the guy over here stressing, pulling it. I want to put the, that Austin back the together. danger of the chains and the whatnot. I want to put that car back together. Yeah, I know. We need to get back on that Austin. That Austin needs to get I'm, done. I'm tired of seeing it sit, man. All right, well, that's what we're going to do because I'm going to be waiting on a... Well, I, I already have the Rough Country uh, adjuster. I just need to run down a Tom's, grab it, and then engine mount should be here tomorrow or Wednesday. I don't know for sure. So it can't come off the framing until we got all that? It ain't going nowhere until I got all that. Uh, if I have to pull it or have to do something. I'm not going to be sitting here strapping this thing back up because that's $250 just to strap it up. Just for us to put it on here, that's $250. So if I take it off and I put it back on, I got to charge you again. I'm not trying to charge you extra. Whew. Let's go see what Vlad's been up to. Golly, boy. I was wondering what all was going on over here, man. Boy, I've been sanding all day long. What if I just ran my hand along it? Oh, Fio Labondo? Yeah, Dude, you have like 40 or 50 people in the comment section roasting me. I don't know, I don't think so. What happened to your car, Nate? What, what the Beamer? The E92. Loose leak. I think, actually, I don't think it is. I need. I do need to test it, though. Didn't you do something with injectors? Oh, yeah, we cleaned the injectors on it. Did that help? Yeah, it fixed it. Nice. Well, I mean, it, it got it running back because it had like an intermittent misfire and... It was one of the injectors that Sam Crack filled full of oil. Come on, Sam. You don't know the difference between your stepmom and an injector. All right, so I got this free, hey, free car. Free car, how much you gotta spend to fix it now? All right, so we got all the injectors out and they, they don't look too great. They look real black and nasty, but uh, good thing we got this injector cleaner over here. So we're gonna try to clean them out. So the last injector is done and check that out. And this was actually the one that was giving us problems. This was a uh, cylinder one misfire. Hopefully that fixes it. It might be a bad injector. I'm thinking about maybe putting the second one in the first just to rule that out. But for now, we're gonna just put everything back together and see if we get the misfire code again. All right, so we got all the injectors installed. Everything went smoothly. Now it's time to put the little uh, hoses back on and crank it up and see what happens. <laughs> Yes, sir. All right, we're going to let it warm up a little bit and take it for a test drive. All right, so I got it pulled out here and it sounds very healthy. It did not sound like this before. It sounded very weird before. Even when it wasn't misfiring, the throttle response was, was not like that. So I'm gonna let it warm up and then we're gonna do a little pull and see if the check engine light comes back. All right, so we got it warmed up. We're gonna just do a little test hit just to see if it goes back into limp mode. Yo, this thing is working beautifully. Look at that. This thing actually pulls now. All right, so that's it. BMW is done. Got it running spec. Got it looking spec. 